So after six weeks, the Panthers are back at square one. We're three and three. Three consecutive losses. It's been a long time since we won a football game, but I'm still going to give you the keys to how we can get back into the win column this week against the New York Football Giants. You're listening to Money in the Bank. So usually I break these things up between offense and defense, but because the issues with the Panthers are kind of all intertwined, that's kind of how I'm going to attack this video. So the Panthers defense is coming in facing a New York offense that's averaging a measly 19 points per game. They're averaging 86 yards rushing per game. Their leading rusher is Daniel Jones at about 200 yards so far this year. This is telling you right now whether offense is, is whether offense is relying on. Now, I'll, I'll take a look at the numbers. Right now, Daniel Jones leads his team at rushing touchdowns. He's tied with Saquon Barkley at two rushing touchdowns. He has a total of six rushing touchdowns. It has six total touchdowns with four turnovers being four interceptions being thrown. I do not have the number for fumbles, but I think oh, two fumbles, one loss. So five total turnovers for Daniel Jones so far this year. So you're talking about a guy that has six touchdowns, five total t turnovers. This is not a very good football team. They're one and five for a reason. They have been missing their, 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 a lot of their star receivers. I mean, we can go, we can go look at, you know, go through and look at it. Right now, Sterling Shepard has been out for, for, for some time. He's been back as of late. Darius Slayton as well. John Ross has been banged up as well. Again, a lot, their top three receivers have been out, giving Kadarius Tony the right away to be able to take over their offense, leading them in receiving with a little over 300 yards thus far. Now, what I would say is that on paper, this, this Giants offense has no business putting up points against our defense. Our defense is still not an elite group, but still a top half of the league type of group, giving up 327 yards of total offense per game, 111 on the ground, about 215 through the air. They are, they are an elite group. Not, no, sorry, oh God, sorry, sorry, sorry. They're not in the league group, but they are a team that's, they're in the top half of the league as far as defense being played in this, so far this year. Now, a lot of, a lot of issues that with our defense is that can we keep, can we sustain drives? Can we keep our offense on the field? We're looking at a Giants defense that's giving up around 400 yards per game, 412 to be exact, 275 through the air, 137 on the ground. The Panthers are a team that is struggling right now to, 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 to garner any type of traction in the ground game. Can they establish that? This is the one week where if you want to establish a ground game, this will be the week to do so. Uh, Michael George seems to be the guy that's going to stand, that's going to step in for the offensive line this week at one of the guard positions, and I think that may be the better option that we have thus far. Pat F. Line should not be in the league at all. Let's just, let's just be honest here. He shouldn't be in the league at all. But what what? How will this game go? How will the Giants score points? Well, they, it, it, they'll score points by simply being able to keep the Panther offense, keep Panther defense on the field for about 80 points. If, they, if it's like anything like last week, if they're able to get 80 plays of offense off, they're going to score some points. Let's just be completely fair. And right now, the Panthers' offensive line is the key group. It's the, it's the key group every week. We understand this. We're not we're not we're not new to to how things have gone this season. The offensive line will be the key group this year this week. Um, can they protect? Can they allow the ground game to get going? They're going to try to really establish the ground game here. And I think that, I mean, the mode is, nobody wants to say it, but Matt Rule wants to take the ball out of Sam Darnold's hands. That's simply what it's been. I, I think they've wanted to do that from pretty early on since he's gotten here. Take the ball out of his hands, allow the ground game to be the, the ground game will be the factor that this team leans on. And, I mean, and again, I'm not opposed to that. It's just that there's a lot of issues that arise when we talk about a fourth-year guy having to be treated as if he's a rookie and we're having to limit his touches. Again, I'm not sure if Amir Abdullah signed a contract. I don't think so to this point. The Panthers are also in talks to, to be trying to acquire Marlon Mack. This running back room is going to be pretty deep. Right now, Royce Freeman hasn't necessarily been the guy that I thought he could be in those short yard situations. But Chuba Hubbard has played, has exceeded my expectations some. I, I, there, I mean, there's still things he does he does not do well that I would rather have a, a veteran running back in the game for. But right now, the Carolina Panthers are just a team that there's not many options, man. There's not many options. I, I think if your offensive line was playing better, you know, the ground game would be better. Also, I think that there are rookie mistakes being made by Chuba Hubbard that when you break down the film, it's, it's is glaring what he's not doing, but it's it, but it's not that it's anything that can't be fixed. It's just that for right now, it's going to be pretty tough for us to win if we don't have a guy that can make veteran play after veteran play after veteran play. 
um, that's kind of where we're at right now. Shy Smith, one of my favorite guys. Well, of course, you all know why Shy Smith is my favorite guy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? From the crib, you're in South Carolina, you already know what's going on. But he is moving up to wide receiver three this week. Now, what changes for him? The playbook is going to be full for him. The playbook, he will, he, will, he will have full responsibility with this playbook, unlike last week where he had a package, a certain package, and it worked. It worked for, where, for, for, for when they implemented it. Um, what does he do? What does he bring? He's been he's gonna bring something that I thought we could have used earlier in the year, which is that Kurt Samuel, Curtis Samuel type of role where you you, you have a guy that can line up in the backfield, a guy that can take the jet sweeps, a guy that can do all of the the gimmicky type of thing that you that, that we like that Curtis did last year that got him and made him a thousand a one thousand total yard type of guy. Sean Smith can do that. This is what, and he's a better receiver right now than Curtis was when he came out. I can confidently say that. So for me, it's all about getting him involved. Allow allow him to get in space. You have him. You have that's another explosive we- weapon that you that, that you've added. I mean, I like I, lo- I like Terrence Marshall. Terrence Marshall isn't that explosive type of guy compared to a Robbie and a DJ. Adding adding Shy adds a lot more of what you had last year to this offense. And, and, and I mean, there, there's ways to implement it all. Hopefully, Joe Brady can figure that out. I mean, that, 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 that's been rumored. He made he made a lot of offensive running back this week just to get some type of change of pace into that backfield, get some type of explosion there. The keys for Carolina are simple. Take the pressure off of your quarterback. I, at this point, I truly don't trust Sam to win this football game. If we can control the game, if we can control the type of environment this game is being played in, I mean, if we can control how much we're on the field, if we can control the line of scrimmage, if we can control the type of environment this game will be, how... Like, how tough would it be for Sam to get things done? If that's the case, then you'll win this game. Uh, defensively, it's simply this, man. I don't think pound for pound they should be able to scheme our defense. It's, I will say Sterling Shepard is a guy that I like. John Ross is a guy that can get over the top, and Darius Slayton is a solid receiver. Nothing that compares to our secondary. Uh, there's, there's not, there's not going to be any... From what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, Stephon Gilmore will not be available for the, for this week's game. He has been practicing, but I don't think he'll be, be available. So you're going to have to roll with, with DJ, Bouye, Keith Taylor, which I think is fine. I don't think CJ, I don't know if CJ Henderson is going to be on the field as well, but I think it's fine to roll with that group. I think it's good enough to stop just about any receiving core in the league. It's going to be all about whether that offensive line can get it done at the end of the day. And I think it's we're, going to, we're looking at Joe Bray. We're looking at Matt Ward saying, hey, fix this offense. Allow this defense a chance to compete. And give them a chance that when they get stops, you're going to compliment them by putting up points. On the road this week will be a key game. A game that I will say, if you are able to win it, there are some winnable games in, in the next five weeks that could possibly have you above over 500 again and possibly looking at that seventh spot in the playoffs. So the season's not over. Everything's still in front of you, but you got to figure it out now. But getting to the final score predictions, let's go ahead and run that up next. Let's make this short and sweet. I think the Panthers win this football game. I don't think that – I think that it still will be a struggle because the Panthers are a struggling team right now, so there's no surprises there. Um 28-23 is my final score that the Panthers give up a little bit more than what we would like to against a team that's this and up. But no surprises here when you have an offense that's not playing well. You're going to have to get something for your defense. Your offense is going to have to play better than what it has in the past few weeks. I don't know where the 28 points come from for Carolina. I don't know where the 23 points come from from, from New York. But, again, I just, I'm just that's what I'm going to roll with. I mean, let's just be clear here, man. We're a team that's struggling and everything is still in front of us if we so choose to take advantage of it. So we'll see. But you've been listening to Money in the Bank. I'm your host, Shot T Store. And follow us at P1N underscore network on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Keep us locked in. We just hit 1K, folks, on Instagram. Thank you all that have watched this, the YouTube channel. We know I know a lot of you, you guys are coming from Instagram to here to watch these videos. So I, I truly appreciate, we truly appreciate all that you've done for us and allowing us to be able to feed you some, some of this content that we think is good and allowing some fans that are just fans to be able to talk to you guys. So for all existing persons, man, peace and love. I love you. I love you all. And I'm out.